Joe, you got the result you wanted, but uh, probably didn't get there the way you, you wanted to. You started out a little slow. What uh, what was going through your mind uh, as the fight was kind of unfolding? Uh, most of it I expected. Um, he was a little more powerful than I had anticipated. Not you know, like he hit hard, obviously, but just the way he threw his weight in behind every punch and some of them, even when they were missing or I was half blocking them, it knocked me off balance because it's a whole other person just running into you. So that was a little surprising. What was the emotion going in there? I mean, you guys obviously had some tension at the, at the stare downs yesterday. I mean, was this uh, like a, a personal thing? I mean, did you go in there with a, with, with a little bit, maybe almost too much emotion? I think he took it a little more personally than I did because, I mean, usually I don't talk any trash, right? But. Me and my guys at the gym talk reckless to each other every single day. I can't tell, especially like the younger guys like Brendan Allen, I can't tell you how many times that guy's coming to the gym calling me four letter words and every day I'm like, I'm gonna kill you. Like legitimately gonna kill you. So I'm pretty used to it. So I was hyped up and I was ready to go, but you know, I was still pretty positive about it. So for me, it, it kind of helped, but I don't know for him, I have no idea. Things did start to swing your way as the battle wore on. What, what, what I mean, what, what's the adjustments that you had to make, or I mean, what you know caused things to kind of turn your direction? Yeah, I feel like I was uh, mostly in control. I had him at the end of that jab. I gave up that big takedown early, but then you know he, I don't know what he felt on the ground, but he decided he didn't want to be there. So I got right back up and. Other than that, I was just kind of outlanding him. And um, one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to kick more. End up hitting his elbow with the first kick and kind of swole my ankle up. So I had to switch to punching the body. And I saw that was taxing on him. You know, then once I went to the body and his hands started dropping, I started touching that chin again. And in the third round, I got him rocked. And that was the end from there. All right, so last thing for me, I mean, I know you may not necessarily be in a position to call people out and that sort of thing. But I mean, what does make sense for you in terms of time, or, you know, a location that the UFC's announced or, or a fight that you do want? Uh, just depends on how fast I can heal up. I got to get a couple things x-rayed and once I'm ready to go, I'm eager to jump back in there. That left hand that you snuck in, that you snuck in there in the third round, is that something you notice when you take advantage of when you just capitalize on that one opening? Uh, I noticed it, uh, you know, I had kind of came from the outside in uh, around his guard a little bit and touched his chin quite a few times. And then it was just a matter of when he would overswing and expose himself on a bad angle, following him enough that I could release that left hand, not necessarily to hit him big, but just land the punch while he's off balance and can't take it. Is that something you notice during the fight? We always kind of prepare for that for anybody because eventually guys are going to swing big when you stay uh, disciplined enough. And um, I did see with him the way he, like I said, he was just launching himself with those big hooks. Every once in a while I could see the way he would dip down and come up. I'm like, all right, if he misses, he's going to be exposed over there. And I did it my last fight too, but this time I made sure after I wobbled him I capitalized on it. How weird or awkward was the fight in Because I'm assuming you don't spar with two of the middleweights that are five, six. It was a little bit different, you know. Uh, my jab was like awesome, which you know is never bad, but it's usually not that good. And then him coming inside, like he's got to make a big circle for everything, but a big circle for him is a small, tight circle for me and everybody else. So it was kind of interesting to get the blocks down and like see the range and places I'd normally be safe, I wasn't, and vice versa. So it's a little bit of a feeling out process as far as that goes. It seemed that I mean the fight was fairly pretty even, like. And it seemed there was a, a one point that it turned, and it seemed like all things were going in your favor. Did you feel that way, and what was that turning point? Uh, I feel like in the first round, what I felt like anyway was like I was establishing my range. I figured in my head, I was like, all right, I probably won the first, but it was a little closer because no one did anything huge, and he like ran at me a couple times. So I, you know, tell off the crowd reaction, which seems to be what the judges go by, that it was probably even first round. And the second round, I really started tagging him with those body shots, and he slowed down a little bit. I was like, okay, now for sure I got momentum going. And then in the third round, you know, I got a little too eager, got caught with a shot, and then I came right back at him. And once I saw my chance, I had to jump on that neck. And where would you rank this performance among others in your career? Because you got to display a little bit of everything, good striking, and you finished with a good submission. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't bad. He's tougher than I gave him credit for, and, you know, he's never been finished, so it was one of my better ones. Was this height the reason for your, for your stance? I noticed you kind of were kind of yeah. over a little bit. Yeah, well, and I figured he would try to take me down a little bit more than he did, and even if he didn't take me down, all of his strikes kind of come off of that wrestler shot movement where he's dipping and then coming over the top. So if I'm going to stand way upright, it's kind of taking my shoulders back away when if I want to be long, I can stay at his level. My shoulders are out a little bit farther. I can touch him with that jab from farther, and I have more time to adjust his shot if he decides to shoot. As we mentioned earlier, there was a little bit of a scuffle. Was 
that a lot. Mm-hmm. I was right up there. It looked like it was personal. Was there some background to that? Yeah, so before he got in the UFC, he tried to call me out and talk reckless, and it didn't happen, and uh, he had some things to say about that, and then when it did come to pass that we got the chance to fight, he was quiet, and I was just talking all kinds of reckless shit all the time. I made memes about this dude. I, like, I think it really got underneath his skin. So uh, I was having fun with it. I don't know if he took it personally or not, but afterwards I told him, I was like, dude, you're really tough. You know, I talked a lot of shit, but that was a good fight. He got my respect. Uh, Because he was looking for his first UFC fight. I think his original opponent backed out, and I, he must have thought I was sweet over this way and wanted a piece of it. So he got what he asked for. You mentioned that you would actually be getting some X-rays done and things like that. Are you just referring to standard medicals, or are you actually feeling like something might have gotten injured in this fight, or is it a nagging injury going into? Uh, just standard stuff. My hand feels a little jacked up, so there may be something there, but I highly doubt it. It's just precautionary. Did that happen in the fight then? Did that, did that come off a particular shot? Uh, I don't know if it came off a particular shot. It's probably just accumulation. There was a lot of chatter on Twitter. Um, DC was basically kind of coaching for the podcast. Did you hear any of that? I didn't hear DC, no. That would be really funny if he was, though, because I doubt he even heard it because, you know, I – Fun fact, uh, Bilal Muhammad, my teammate, was in the stands. I heard him louder than my cornerman, so he was. So if that's the case, it was pretty fair as far as that goes. Was he like giving him like, fight advice? No, oh, yeah, he was literally trying to corner me from like 10 rows back. So yeah, that was interesting. Joe, were you surprised he didn't try to take you down or make a greater effort to just try to Yes and no. I mean, if you want to score points, takedowns don't hurt, obviously. The, they seem to be awarded points, even if they're effective or not. But, you know, I'm a really high-level grappler, so I feel like he was smart enough in that sense to know that if he did go to the ground with me, it wouldn't be a wrestling match. It'd be an MMA grappling match, and I definitely would win that. Did he ever hurt you? It looks like he hit you with some serious bumps. Uh, the third round, yeah, he, he got me doing the stanky leg a little bit. That, was, yeah, that, that one touched me pretty good. I think I still would have been able to recover even if he rushed me, but, you know, I, I got caught sleeping for a second, and I paid for it. How big a difference do you think the experience level was here? It seemed to be that might have been one of the things that was really important in this victory for you. The fact that you've just been there so many times against such high level competition and were able to stay really calm. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it makes a big difference. You know, I, I think that was my 10th UFC fight, and. Uh, or maybe, yeah, I think it was my 10th UFC fight, and he's only had, what, seven or eight fights total. I've had, you know, if I'm including ones that aren't even listed, probably 45-plus. So for me, it makes a difference. I don't know about him. He's had a lot of wrestling competition, but it definitely helped me be comfortable in there. Last one for me. Where do you think you go from here? Or do you have my top 10 guy? I'm sure you're really wanting to make that pick. I don't have anybody in mind. I, uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't even name half the guys on the top ten. I'm just here to beat people up. So whoever they want to get me, I'm down. How are you going to set a break? Uh, I'm going to friggin' ice my ankle and drink some beer. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs>